Hi, I'm Connor and welcome to ADO. So both PDPs and ice plots can visualize the relationships used by a model to make predictions. In last week's video, I explained the theory behind the methods. In this video, we will see how to apply the methods using Python. We will be using the scikit-learn package. We will see that this allows us to easily visualize the plots for both individual features and to create two-dimensional PDPs. It also allows us to access the underlying data used to create the plots. We'll see that this is useful for creating custom ice plots and plots for categorical features. So let's jump to the notebook. If you want any of the code we discuss, then check out the link in the description. So we start with our imports. As mentioned, we'll be using the scikit-learn implementation of these methods. And we actually have two functions here. So the first one is used to display the different plots. And the second one is used to get the underlying data uh, that's used to create the plots. So we'll be applying these to both a regression and classification model. So we have two different modeling packages. These are also provided by scikit-learn, but this is not a requirement. And you can still apply the partial dependence package to other models like XGBoost. So let's start with our continuous target variable. We load our data set, we get the target variable and the features. We will be using the same data set as the theory video. As a reminder, it contains the details on the sales of 1,000 second-hand cars. It contains five features, including the car's age at the time of the sale and the car type. That is, if it is a normal or classic car. The goal is to predict the price using these features. We train a random forest on this data set. And the target variable is continuous, so we use the random forest regression package. Now, let's see how to visualize the relationships captured by this model. With the sklearn package, we have two options. We can either display the PDPs directly, or we can get the data used to create the plots. This code does the latter. It will return 1,000 individual lines that make up the ice plot for car age. This is what I used to create that really cool math skiff we saw in the theory lesson. Note the parameters. The first three, are the model, X feature matrix, and the features we want to analyze. In this case, we just have one feature, which is car age. By default, the package will vary the feature between its fifth and 95th percentile. By setting the percentile to between zero and one, we use the feature's entire range. The grid resolution gives the number of points within the features range. In other words, each line will have 100 steps from the minimum to maximum of car age. Kind can be set to average, individual, or both, depending on whether you want a PDP, ice plot, or both, respectively. So in our case, we will just return the, the PDP data, which is the predictions for the individual lines. So when we output the length, we get a length of 1000. So that's the prediction data for the 1000 individual instances in our data set. Let's take a closer look at the elements of PDP. So we're outputting the shape of the values and the, the individual components. Values is an array with one with shape one by 100. So we have one feature and 100 permuted values for that feature. Individual is an array with shape one by 1000 by 100. So for our one feature, we have 1000 prediction lines and each line consists of 100 points. This gives us a lot of flexibility over how we can display the data. For example, let's display the prediction line for the first instance. We plot the 100 permuted values versus the 
100 predicted values at those given values for the first instance. We also add a red dot for the actual feature value and the prediction for this instance. We can see that as car age decreases, the predicted price decreases. But to be clear, this is for one instance only. Now, having access to this data is pretty useful as it provides a lot of flexibility. But we can also make some interesting plots using the built-in functions. So now we're using the partial dependence display package and the for estimator function. We use this in a very similar way to before. We pass in the model, X feature matrix and feature of interest. By setting kind to individual, we'll get the individual lines. This is technically an ice plot, but we'll see how we can improve it later. Okay, so let's add the PDP to this plot. To do this, we just set kind to both. And this parameter sets the style for the individual lines. You can see we're just setting them to black lines. And this parameter sets the style for the PDP or average prediction line. In this case, we're using a red dotted line. So the interpretation of partial dependence will differ depending on which line you're looking at. For an individual line, it is the predicted price for that instance as we vary car age. For the PDP, it will be the average predicted price across all 1000 instances. If you just want the PDP, you must set the kind to average. We can use this plot to make claims about the model in general and not an individual prediction. We can see that the predicted price tends to decrease as car age increases. But is this relationship true for all instances? We could use an ice plot to help answer, but this original one is not the most useful. Instead, we can use the same plot, but with one key difference. We set centered to true. This makes all the individual lines start at zero. We can clearly see that some of the instances have the opposite relationship with car age. That is, their price actually increases. Now, in the theory video, we saw that this was due to an interaction between car age and car type. We visualize this by changing the color of the individual lines. But one limitation of this package is there's no option to do this. So we need to create a custom plot. We start by getting all the data used to create the PDP and ice plots. We need to center the individual lines ourselves. To do this, we get the first value from every line and we subtract it from every value in that line. This will ensure that every ice plot line starts at zero. We plot each of these lines using an appropriate color from the colors array. Remember, car type is a categorical feature that can take a value of zero or one. So to get the appropriate color, we index the color array using the feature value for that instance. We also add a centered PDP and custom legend. This gives us the beautiful plot we saw in the theory video. The interaction should now be clear. We can see that for classic cars, price tends to increase as the car ages. Now, let's take a look at a few more examples. Creating a PDP of two features is similar to before. All we need to do is pass in an array of feature names instead of an individual feature. 
We do this for car age and kilometers driven. On the two axes, you have the values for the different features. And the colors of the plot is determined by the average predicted price for the given feature pair. These PDPs are useful for visualizing interactions between features. In fact, this chart suggests a possible interaction between the two features. That is, the predicted price tends to be lower when both features have large values. Yet, you should be cautious when drawing these types of conclusions. The results you see here are actually due to a correlation between the two features. The amount the car has driven tends to be higher when the car is older. We display the ice plot for the categorical feature car type. You can see that it is displayed as a line plot, just like for continuous variables. But due to the discrete nature of this feature, it may be better to use a histogram or box plot. Thankfully, we can create a custom plot. As before, we do this using the partial dependence function to get the ice plot data. We then split this data into the normal and classic car predictions. Finally, we plot this using a box plot. If you want a PDP for a categorical feature, simply plot the histogram of the average predictions for each category. To end, we'll create an ice plot for a binary target variable. We'll see the interpretations are similar to the above plots. To start, we create a binary target variable. It has a value of 1 if the original car price is above average and 0 if it is below average. We also train a random forest classifier using this target variable. We plot the ice plot using the exact same code as before. You can see the output is also very similar. The main difference is the values on the y-axis. I'll leave understanding the interpretations of these values as a challenge. If some of the theory was a bit unclear, I recommend checking out this video. Otherwise, check out this playlist, which goes into depth on another explainable AI method, SHAP. And remember, you can get my XAI course for free with the link in the description.